gender equality really pops up when you talk about demographic changes because women are kind of one of the key actors in the demographic changes because she's the one who has to go and work more, she has to make more children, she has to take care of more people and fourthly, and this is a big problem as well, she has a very complicated uh, relationship with the welfare systems as they were constructed more around the male breadwinner model. So you could say that women or gender equality comes out as a, as a huge issue that needs to be dealt with in the demographic changes. When we talk about de demographic changes, suddenly we're talking about how can we enable women to better reconcile work and private life? How can we enable women to have a, a good labor market career so they have a better relationship with the welfare system? How can we modify welfare systems so they are more adequate suited to the way that the women work? Uh, so that's a very positive uh, evolution. On the other hand, this is also a big challenge to to, to handle these debates as the way that we perceive and we discuss gender equality is very, very different across the European Union. Today, I think that at least in some environment, in certain environments, there's a, there's, a, there's a way of framing gender equality in terms of having dual breadwinner, a dual carer model. And so that gives us then a lead on how to frame family policies, how can we enable pal uh, family policies to allow two partners to actually go on the labour market and at the same time also to take care of dependents, whether they be uh, parents, grandparents or children. And this actually means a whole change in the way that we, uh, that we organise work life, the way that we organise our social security systems, the way that we uh, organise the educational system. So it actually gives us a, an angle that we can use in order to, to, to reformulate uh, the way that we organise our societies. So we can actually learn from each other, we can discuss these things together and then of course the implementation is finally up to the member states which is quite natural because the systems, the welfare systems are quite complex and need to be dealt with in a more local way to, insert, uh, to ensure coherence in the systems. I think there are a lot of good ideas on the table. The first good idea, and I think this is a really important idea, is that demographic changes should be seen in the positive light. I mean, we should perceive this as a positive evolution in our societies, and this is a measure that needs to get through to everybody, also on the national level. And so if we, if we see it in a positive way, we have to, uh, we have to put into place positive uh, policies. So what exactly the policy should be, I think it's very, very, very difficult to, 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 to say something about. But I think we can say something about that uh, we need to make people be able to work longer, but maybe differently and maybe not as many hours a week. Now, this was not put forward as a policy solution, but I mean, I think there was a lot of discussions about how can we work or construct careers differently today than, than we've been doing until now. There was also a lot of discussion about the pension systems, uh, all the reforms that have taken place in the, in the pension systems actually now uh, makes us ask the question about what about the adequacy of the systems, you know, how, how could we actually make sure that we have adequate pensions so that we need to construct, reconstruct pension systems or, or remodel the way that we share risks within pension systems. So that's also something that can be taken back as a, a type of debate that can be had on, on the national level. Mm -hmm.